So what I'm going to show you next is the wheels. And as I said before, the wheels, they're not exciting to look at. They're actually quite confusing to look at at times, but I'm going to make sure that you understand exactly what you're looking at. And essentially on these wheels, you've got these lines that are pointing to each other. And on those lines, you're going to see arrows. And if you see arrows pointing at each other, then that indicates a mutual antagonism. So as it says there, arrows point toward calcium and magnesium, and I'll show you that in a second, indicating a mutual antagonism. It's probably best if I just show you the chart so you kind of get an idea. This is the antagonistic chart. Just be, be clear on this one first. So this is your antagonistic chart. It's the one you're probably most familiar with. It's on the front of your reports. So if you're looking to, to get easy access to this, um, pull up one of your hair analysis reports, and I believe this image is on the front page, and you can have a look at that. And this image is widely available um, across the internet and, and various other spots. It's, it's, the, it's the large mineral wheels showing the antagonisms. So just to make sure everyone's clear, let me just sort of pull something up here. So you can see at the top of the screen, we've got calcium. And then if we just go down, we've got magnesium down at the bottom of the screen. And you can see here in the middle is your mutually antagonistic arrow. Not all of these have this double arrow. Some of them only have a single arrow, meaning that it's antagonistic towards the one that it's pointing to. A concept that I want to make sure that everyone is very aware of here. Hold on a second. So a concept that I want to make sure everyone is aware of here is that when you affect one mineral, right? So let's say you raise calcium up really high and that's antagonistic to magnesium and magnesium goes down. When you affect that magnesium, you then in turn have to affect a minimum of two other minerals. And depending on the relationship with those minerals, whether it's synergistic or antagonistic, that mineral will then change as well and will go up or down. And then that mineral is going to have its effect on other minerals. So you can see that it becomes almost an infinite amount of scenarios and possibilities on what to do. And if we guess at this, we're really, really creating problems because we're almost always going to guess wrong. We end up taking too much of something and then that lowers something else. So we really do need to make sure that we're measuring things and it's critical to make sure that we're doing so. So, so when you're looking at these charts, don't get too wrapped up in things. Don't, don't start looking back and saying, all right, well, my end goal is I want to increase my potassium. So I'm going to go and take a lot of cobalt. And well, it turns out that cobalt is then influenced by manganese. So maybe I need to go and take more manganese. The computers, all the research, all that's been done for you. And when we put together the programs, it's taken into account the absolute best that it possibly can. And that's why it's usually best not to tinker with most minerals. Some we can tinker with a little bit based on individual need, but we want to keep as close to things as we possibly can.